Welcome to Made in Mari, the podcast that focuses on the successes and struggles of local businesses. Let's get started. My name's G, I'm your host, and today I have with me through the power of Skype, Adele Napier, who is a personal, professional, and organizational consultant and coach. Thank you very much for joining me today. And where exactly are you at the moment? So this morning, I'm in my office, uh, in my home in Fintorn, mm -hmm. uh, which is where I do part of my work from. Okay. And I think you do quite a bit of traveling as well. So you're not always in Findhorn, right? You, you travel to other parts of the country sometimes? I do. So I do part of my work um, from here, but I also go into organizations um, in the local area here and also a bit further afield. Ah, wow. And that, that accent that you have... That's not a Scottish accent, right? So, uh, so you're not you're not from here originally. So, so where are you originally from, if I can ask? I'm um, originally Zimbabwean, mm -hmm. uh, Zimbabwean born, and also later grew up in South Africa. Yeah, so wow. I am far from where I hail. <laughs> wow, and I want to get into the organizational coach uh, and that element of your work. So a lot of people are not really going to know what it is that that means. So can you describe a little bit about what you do? Essentially, what I do is I support people. So it can be uh, people in leadership positions. It can be an exec team. It can be wider than that, coming into any person or team in an organization. And what I'm essentially there to do is to help that organization or that person or that team succeed, if you like. It, it, it's also, it's not only organizations, it's also people in their own personal lives. I'm, I'm really here to help them succeed. It would be like the bottom line of saying it. Okay, so somebody would get in touch with you and they'd say, I need some personal development or I need help taking the next step in my, my life. And how would you, how would you begin to go about helping them or the organization? What are the first things that you look at? Um, so I think one of the first things, whether it's an organization or a person is what I am looking for. I would always have just an initial conversation with someone to see, okay, is this a good fit? Like, can we, is there a resonance and a feeling that we can work together? Because that's really important with a coach. Mm -hmm. But what I'm always, uh, first of all, looking for is what do they want? So what is actually, uh, you know, what matters to them? What are they actually wanting? Um, which is part of what starts to define what does succeeding look like. Yeah. Um, and then also, are they, are they up for making some kind of a commitment to that? Because mm -hmm. I think of, uh, you know, a lot of change does come in the, like a blink of an eye, but usually there's a lot of time before that blink of an eye where we're preparing the ground for it. And I think it, it does often take a bit of a commitment um, and with coaching or holding any kind of organizational process of change, you're going to hit up on a lot of resistance. You're going to, you, 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 you're going to hit, you, you know, you're wanting to change some habits, change some ways of thinking, change some ways of relating. Um, and, and, you know, you're going to hit up against the things that get in the way of that. So you do, I am looking for commitment, some kind of commitment, whether it's a few sessions, whether it's, just sharing more about what they're up for putting into this. Does a, does a goal or a target fit into that element of commitment? Is, is that necessary to have some kind of uh, clear end point? I find that goals or targets definitely have a place, but that's not necessarily the first place to start from for me. For me, it's more about connecting with intention and connecting, it's like a way that I look at things um, is, and this is also what more and more of the research is showing us, is like every one of us has a very creative, um, life-giving, um, I call it living intelligence within us, you know, that is, it has a self-organizing principle. It's actually very creative. We come here wanting to bring meaning, contribution into the world, and it's like the more for me, what a lot of coaching is, is it's 
it's helping people to access that and to get more aligned with that. And because once you get clear about that, there's a clear intention and then there's usually a whole lot of creative energy that comes with it. Then you can start getting more specific about the targets mm-hmm. or goals. And then once you start to have those targets and goals, you can get more specific about the steps to get there. Mm-hmm. You talked about the client's understanding what it is that they want do you find that people want similar things or is it varied um both (laughs) okay so um you know in a lot of ways people are looking for similar things so you know like some of what i was saying there before we we want to have good connections with people in the world around us we want to feel successful like we've made a contribution We want to have a good exchange, like of money, of um, relating, of feel-good factor in the work that we do or in the way that we are in our lives. So I think there's a lot of similarity, but it often shows up very, very differently about the way that we actually want to express ourselves or or, or be in the world. Mm -hmm. I think that it's possible a lot of people don't realize that they need a coach or a coach can help them is how's your experience with that with that era do people understand what a coach does do they understand the help that a coach can give them um i think in some areas it's a bit more obvious so uh for example in sport people understand what a coach does a lot more easily than they do understand what a life coach does or a team coach in an organization so i think that's one of the difficulties uh, in a way of this work is sometimes people who could benefit a lot from coaching don't actually know what it is or, or how it might benefit them. I think coaching as well, it's become this bit of an ubiquitous word, you know, coach, coach, coach. You can go online nowadays. You can, you can sign up for $25 or, and, you know, and get a coaching certificate type of thing. So I, people are understandably quite wary of, um, who do I find? What are they going to do? Do I need this? Some of it can feel quite pushy. Um, you know, oh, three steps to every success you want. Um, yeah, it's 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 a bit of a minefield out there, I think, for people. So how does a how does a person navigate that? If, for example, I feel say stuck in my life and I want to be able to take the next step, and all I'm finding online are these, as you suggested, three steps to you know making everything fantastic, and maybe maybe that's maybe that's not working. You know what what what, what should I do? Which, how should I find a coach? How, how, how can how do I know that a coach is a good coach when I find one? Um, I think I think there are probably a few things to look for. Like one, obviously, it's always great word of mouth. If you if you know someone or hear of someone, that that's always well. I know that's how I would work, how, how I work. It, it read that that helps. I I think um, partly just really listening when you see maybe you see some advertising or you see something someone's written. You can often feel like, does this really, am I a little bit inspired by this? Or, you know, just to really trust your own kind of listening, if you like. But also, I think it's very helpful to be able to speak to someone. So if you're going to make a commitment with a coach, it's great to be able to give them a call, say, can we have a chat? And just in that initial conversation, see how you feel. Like, is this, does this feel good for me? Am I being... Um, can I be supported here? You know, is this someone I have a natural trust towards? Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, oh, what does that What does that word commitment mean, or, or how does that relate to the element of coaching? Or can you give me an example of what kind of commitment a client would make? Um, <clears throat> I just want to pin a little bit onto the previous question, and then I'll answer that one too. Is I think other thing with coaching is to really look for experience Mm -hmm. so I think because I so personally where I've learned the most about coaching especially with teams and bigger organizations and so on is through experience Mm -hmm. and then in a way in my own way being supervised and learning through that experience so it's helpful to I think when you're looking for a coach 
really find out a bit of what they've done and where their experience comes from, that it's not this, it's something just theoretical because it isn't a very regulated body right now with coaching that requires all of that. So that's, that's on that piece. Um, in terms of commitment, uh, what I mean by that is generally the way coaching will work is you will sign up to a certain number of sessions. So um, depending on what you're looking for, you'll have a conversation and, the, and you know, I would recommend, okay, let's start with six sessions or something like that. That's what I mean by commitment. Mm -hmm. um, or in an organization, it's like, yes, you can go in and do a couple of tasters um, and experience uh, the way someone works. But then it's like, okay, if we're going to actually make a shift here, we're going to do X, Y, Z, and we'll usually come up with then what that might look like mm -hmm. in terms of their time um, and so on. And do clients get uh, some sort of work that they have to go away and do by themselves? Is it just that they, they, they sit down face-to-face -face with a person or meet a person online, or is there some element of something like homework as well that, that goes into it? So I would say people who make real shifts, in their organizations or in their lives um, are absolutely doing things outside of the coaching. So what I think coaching can help do is it already starts to give a space where you're looking on your life or looking on your business. You've got a bit of space where you can start to think about it differently. You've got space that's a bit slower than the responding to all the stresses and strains of everyday life where you can start to listen in another way. Mm -hmm. And that in itself can ignite a kind of an energy where you start to follow up on different things. So a certain amount of like homework in, 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 bracket, in, in bracket inverted commas here mm -hmm. naturally I think starts to happen. And then a certain amount of homework um, can be steps that – in, in the process of working together, you start to identify and start to say, okay, look, this is a tiny example, but, you know, if I start in the right way for me every day, that puts me on a different footing and I get into my day differently. So what does that look like for me? You know, how am I slowing down my whole nervous system? Mm -hmm. Because we all know that we start to think differently. We're more creative. We have more access to um the life force, that impulse in us, if we move away from this parasympathetic system, you know, all the science, all the data is showing that. What helps me do that in my life? And if I can start to develop some more um, clear habits, mm -hmm. I can actually start to make some real, real shifts. Mm -hmm. in, in that element of uh, a kind of holistic approach, is is the focus for coaches more on on the brain or, or the the body? Because uh, I think it's hard for for people to understand what actual progress means. Perhaps it means something different for different people. So is a coach looking to improve improve the brain and the mindset, or is it a body related coaching? I don't see those actually as very separate. In a sense, in a coaching session, when we are in conversation. I'm listening to, and over time, you know, soon enough, we're we're both or in a in a group coaching session. We, we're we're starting to listen in all of the different ways because I think our bodies inform a lot. Like when we start to listen to our body, sort of felt sense of some of the, the things happening. We 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 start to get more information. So, for example, if we're having a conversation here, there there would be some. Um, Sometimes when you speak, I'll notice that I am not so interested in, in a sense. I, I don't mean that. I just mean I notice my attention isn't as drawn in mm -hmm. to what you're saying. And I then sort of notice, oh, this might be a little bit more of a habitual way of thinking and speaking that you're doing, for example. Mm -hmm. And then I'm less, so I'll am so i become a little bit more aware of that as that. There'll be other times in the conversation where you'll say something and I will literally feel feel maybe I'll feel like a little more energy coming through my body or whatever so and then I'll know oh this is interesting this feels like it's maybe got a little bit more um 
gravity, you know, gravity to it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I get curious about that. So uh, coaching uh, for me, if we're really um, making full shifts, they, they occur across the whole of who we are. And we use the whole of who we are in the process of understanding. Well, that is perhaps one of the most beautiful descriptions of coaching that I've ever heard. I just have to tell you that right now. That was, that's quite incredible. And if anyone's out there listening to this, I urge you to go back and listen to that again, because there's there's a lot of information contained within that, that answer. You're obviously very passionate about the work that you do. Have you always done this kind of work or did you transition into this from something mm-hmm. else? <laughs> Good question. So um, I think like many people actually in this work, I have done, uh, you know, quite different things before finding my way here. So actually um, I'm pausing here because I'm just deciding how, what layer, or, you know, what sort of, uh, there's, there's different ways of answering this question. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I um, just to just just to add on to the question, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, re- the, the reason why I ask is is simply because I think for most people life is not a straight road, and Absolutely. there are there are many twists and turns. Some of them expected and some of them unexpected. And one of the great things about what gives us the knowledge we need to live our lives at the present moment is the variety of different experiences and challenges that we've had in the past. So um, I'm pretty sure that uh, most people who I know who are coaches have had a past that's a variety of fascinating and interesting experiences. So um, take it any way that you want. Yeah, so um, as you say, life you know, to get from A to B, which is actually really also important about coaching Mm -hmm. and why I'm not always immediately goal and target driven is we often, it is often a very, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's not a straight line. Yeah, it's the river, it meanders. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, I I guess essentially through my life, growing up in South Africa, I was very impacted by the system of apartheid that was in that country. I grew up during the time of apartheid. I was fortunate to also grow up in the time of Nelson Mandela and a big change and all sorts of new possibilities and things. But I was very affected by apartheid when I grew up. Um, my first, if you like, my beginning of my career was more in the corporate world. So I worked for a big multinational um, I was involved in brand building business. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved, there were such good people doing mm-hmm. such creative work and I felt very stimulated, very, um, I learned a lot. But interestingly, I found that there was something about the system that had a similar ring to it <laughs> mm-hmm. than the, almost like the apartheid structure. It's like, I think in our world, there is so much that we are, part of that is in some way let's call it power over whether it's power over nature whether it's power over different groups of people uh, whatever it is and I think there was just something in me looking for more um, or some, something in me was looking for something different like a more life-giving way of, of being and it was actually that's that's how I've landed up in Moray because it was initially the Fintorn Foundation that I used to come to mm-hmm. um, that showed me and that was a place where a lot of experimentation was going on where people were saying look there actually is another way there is a more life affirming way a more holistic way of um, engaging with life like whether it's business whether it's relationships whether it's how we are in nature and so on and so forth um, and so I actually came to Fintorn for a, for a little period where I thought, okay, let me, I want to find something that is my next chapter mm-hmm. and ended up being asked to stay on and facilitate and develop some of the programs here, mm-hmm. working with people in holistic leadership. And that is actually how I kind of, in a way, stumbled. But often then when you look back, you can see the thread. There's been like this kind of golden thread all the way through of what I was what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. And hence, you know, in coaching, I think it's um, very helpful to look at the golden thread. Try and find the golden thread and trust that because mm-hmm. uh, it can take you 
for all sorts of places. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think it was Steve Jobs who said you can only connect the dots looking backwards. So um, you mm. just you you have to you have to trust that the knowledge that yeah. you have is enough to take you in the right direction. What does it mean holistic leadership? That's a really interesting term. Can you can you talk a little bit more about what that what that actually is? Um, so I mean I think we're in a time in the world where it's becoming clearer and clearer that we and also people are showing that they want and need to bring more of themselves to life, like our whole selves, if you like. There's less compartmentalization between work and home. There's, there's, um, you know, there's this need to shift the way we, we do business, um, in, in all kinds of ways. Uh, so holistic leadership is, is a lot about that. It's about, I think it's about becoming a lot more aware of who we are as people and what matters and acting like that matters. Mm-hmm. And that can look like, you know, so I think, you know, there've been time, you know, I, I think this time of a whole lot of people just giving authority to some leader and in a way not being responsible or, or engaged or co-owning like where we go is, is, it's, it's of the past. I think, I think we're looking now at a time of leadership where there is a lot more engagement. We're looking at shared leadership in our teams, in our organizations. We're looking at how do we help? How, how, what are, what are good environments where people can really bring what they are inspired by and passionate about? And how do we relate with each other where we can add on and build up one another and find how we can bring what we're here to bring as opposed to compete, um, opposed to, yeah, yeah. And so I think there's a, there's, a, there's a different kind of leadership called for, and it actually calls for leaders to do some of our own real work. What really feels right? What really matters? What is the purpose of an organization and what are, are the values, you know? And, and, and am I really acting in line with those values? You know, how do I relate to the people that I work with and so on? I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying a lot of different things here, but, um, I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's crucial. Mm-hmm. I like what you said about the element of balance in work and life. I really, I really think that's key. Somebody asked me the other day, um, if I work on Saturday and, and I said, my life is my work. I'm very blessed within the things that I'm doing that um, I don't separate my work from my life. I try to live completely holistically and live live as one. So um, I work or I work from home. I work around my family. I homeschool my kids. And so my children see me at work and I see them in their play. And I don't or at least as much as possible, I try not to separate the two because I find that personally for me, I get much more balance that way. Although I know that everybody's different and the world has lots of different systems and there's a thousand ways to get to the same destination. You talked a little bit about inspiration. What is it that inspires you or who do you look to or what do you look to for inspiration in your work? The first thing that comes to me when you say that is actually the people I work with. <laughs> um, I get so much inspiration. I, I, the more I work with people and see sometimes the challenges people are facing or what people are willing to do to go for something that they would really love that's maybe beyond what their mothers and grandmothers or fathers and grandfathers you know like we we have like quite um strong programming in a way we want to belong in our society and the way that we live and sometimes it's very scary to sort of break out beyond that and i see people doing that kind of thing uh, often and um it's very inspiring to me i think the other thing that i find incredibly inspiring is is when it comes down to it just seeing time and again how much creativity is within us. Um, and when people start to just be able to tap into that more, it's incredibly inspiring. Uh, people can come up with, you know, 
yes, we all want a bottom, you know, like a profitable bottom line. We all want to be able to make money and to have our needs in the world met. But when when we start to expand that out and look like, okay, we want our society to function in a more healthy way, our environment to be flourishing, you know, our natural environment. Um, th- these kinds of things, it, it, it's incredibly inspiring what's within us and what we can do when we work together with the right kind of framing. Um, but then I do, you know, and, and I, I also have, I've been very, very fortunate. I've worked with a lot of fantastic uh, teachers with experts in their field who know this, if you like, human potential movement well. Um, and I, I've, I've been very blessed, yeah, with people that I um, look look to. If there is someone listening and – they're thinking, oh, that's all very well to talk about uh, uh, creativity and being creative, but I don't feel very creative myself. What are uh, maybe two or three pieces of advice or tips you could give to people to uh, improve their creativity or the quality of their life? Something that they could uh, implement you know, very quickly in a day or a couple of days. So first, I think I would just say when I I realize I use the word creativity quite a bit. And um, for some people, that just that means like art, like that you need to paint or write poems or or, or something. And I'm, I'm so I just want to clarify, I'm not using it in that way. I think I'm using it in the way of being creative in the way we literally live our lives. Um, and yeah, so to answer that, I mean, one thing that I think can be helpful is literally every morning when you wake up just to ask yourself the question or at some time in your, you know, early in the morning before you're in your day, just to ask, how do I want to feel? How do I want to feel in this day? And to just practice that a bit and see, see how it is that you want to feel. And just having asked that question that can often just set up a few more possibilities for what you might do or how you might approach your day. Mm-hmm. Another, you know, and, and over time that can become a little bit of a habit that starts to um, inform you. Mm-hmm. Another thing that can be um, a great thing to do is just to do, to ask, well, what is what is something that I really love to do or that relaxes me or that gives me a sense of joy and well-being. It might be watching the sunset. It might be going for a run in the woods. It might, you know, whatever that is. And let yourself have that, you know, commit. Actually, it sounds simple, but sometimes it can be a bit of a commitment. I use that word again, to do. You know, we actually have to commit to allowing ourselves to do something that actually brings us a sense of well-being. And that genuinely has an impact on our whole brain system, our whole nervous system. Um, it relaxes us, it, it, us and it allows us to kind of connect with a sort of creativity that does not come from using the mind in its same um, mm-hmm. loop that it often is in. Oh, those, those are great answers. Um, just so that I get it right in my own head, um... The first thing was to ask yourself, uh, how do I want to feel during the day to, to understand that the direction that you're giving yourself. And obviously, if you start the day in the right way, you've got a better chance of uh, getting somewhere. And um, the second thing is understanding the things that you love to do, understanding what uh, makes you happy and allows you to connect with the creativity inside of yourself. I think that's uh, great advice for anybody for and then of course do do something like if you can't you know take a step at some point but you know just the start of that it opens these little possibilities it's incredible what a little crack you know leonard cohen it's the it's the crack that lets the light in it's it's um not to be under uh, estimated yeah oh yeah the um, you know the power of a candle in a dark room right um great points great points what are some of the, 
hardest parts of the work that you do? Because obviously you enjoy it and you're passionate about it, but there must be elements of it that get a little bit tough and a little bit difficult at times. So what what are the hard parts for you of uh, the coaching elements? Um, I think on the one hand, I, I, I feel like in, in this particular way of coaching or the coaching that I'm doing, which is quite holistic and it's about impacting more than just the, the person, but the world around in a positive way. I, I, I sometimes find it tricky in that people don't necessarily understand the benefits of what can come through coaching and so don't know whether they need it or not. And that can be a tricky thing to try and articulate and get that across. Um, and then actually another one that comes to my mind when you speak is coaching or facilitating, especially like in an organized, especially in a, in a largish organizational setting. Often as a coach, what we need to do is be very open. If we're really serious about listening to the inspiration and letting people with bring their own inspiration and let that be the guide and let their own creative solutions come up and come forward, you actually need to be in the unknown and you need to be willing to be in the unknown if you're going to make a real, you know, a real creative move um, and break through from your organization being one way to now another way. So and did, I, I sometimes find that I find that scary. I find that scary, especially in with a group of people where there's a tendency to look for the coach to have the answers. And of course, I have a certain frame. I have tools to draw on. I know I can hold the space and so on um, and, and guide something. But if I'm really going to be a good coach, I am going to dare to be in the unknown and hold the tension of that. And that's probably one of the biggest challenges but also the most rewarding parts of my work because almost every single time something shows up that then we can take and and move forward with. And that for me is uh, where the real uh, creative life uh, happens. Wow. Um, Yeah. In my my mind, that resonates in the context of uh, the fact that the challenge is the reward, basically. Uh, in the whole experience, which is uh, which is a really nice way to to look at it. How does a person break through the fear, or how does an organization get to the other side of the problem? I know it's a it's a big question. It's different for everybody, but one thing that I've noticed working with a lot of people in business is there's a lot of fear under the surface. It doesn't matter if you're an individual trying to improve the the betterment of your life or a business trying to make the next step. There's always a lot of fear there in the back of people's minds. Uh, What can people do about that kind of problem? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So I think um, this is part of why coaching or facilitation or having a consultant or someone can support you because I think one of one of the one of the frameworks I follow called the U Lab um, is it's a lot about so before you begin a process so so if you if if you're being coached one on one one of the things that you want to do is is build trust so you want to build trust with the coach you want to build some relational you 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 know uh, kind of a, a trusting relational connection. Same in an organization. You want to look at, okay, what are the what are the relationships in this organization like? Is there a lot of conflict? Is there a lack, you know, how do you build trust? You, you need to build a level of trust in yourself. Know where your support is, know where your resources are. Same in a group or an organization. Mm-hmm. And then also, as you build that trust, as you know where your resources are, who that, that that someone has your back um you can then start to access more of okay well what matters where is the inspiration where are we headed mm-hmm. and you can start to feel that so then you get to where we, you're headed so you're starting to create like a it's a little bit like in a garden you know you tend to the soil you really tend to the soil and then as you go into that inquiry about where you're wanting to go and you're starting to look at well where are we now what do we need to let go of? 
what's not serving, what, what's blocking us um, from firing on all of our cylinders, you start to become more aware of that. And as you go through that process, a certain moment comes where you ideally, but it's, it's also about how you facilitate it in, in that, in that to be able to, but a certain letting go happens, a certain, um, okay, yes. This is where we're aiming for. We, we, we know. And actually, here are some of our habits and things that no longer are serving or where we're blocked. Very often, a kind of a shift happens there when we become like you could use the word present. Um, m- m- you become more present. And that's the moment where something new then starts to come. And there will be fear. And there is fear and there is resistance and there's all of that. But the more you can acknowledge it, you can let it be there and not have to uh, act and react and kind of go, oh, no, actually, this is too scary. I'm going to go back to my old way. Well, maybe you need to do that a little bit till you grow more awareness and you grow more of your own resource um, to be able to let, let go and let something new come. That's very beautifully described. Um, I might steal that one myself <laughs> at some point in time. How important is it to get outside of your comfort zone as uh, a person who wants to develop? I think a lot of people stay within things that they're comfortable with. They know what they like and they like what they know. And uh, that is that is their life. But maybe to progress you need to get beyond that so so how important is it to get out of the comfort zone i'm I'm not like a great one of advocating getting out of the comfort zone for the sake of it Mm -hmm. um you know comfort zones are great we're we're human beings we we need we need the familiar we need the things we love we need the things that are comforting (laughs) and so on I, i i don't personally think there's something wrong with a comfort zone per se but i i think this asking what what we really want um and checking how fulfilled we are uh is important because if we're not and if there is something that actually we know we would love the more we can kind of give attention to that the more we'll be pulled um yeah, I, I guess I, I'm hesitating a bit here because I guess I've seen too many, I think we all know too many New Year's resolutions, you know, where it's like I can set all these things that take me out of my comfort zone. You know, if I'm wanting to learn to, to jog or run or something, I can suddenly go through this spurt of doing all the signing up for all these, you know, couch, couch to however many Ks or, or so on, which are great, by the way. I mean, I think these things are good, but if we're just going beyond our comfort zone without – bringing the rest of us with us or knowing why or having our being really connected to our own sense of, Oh, this is good. This, this, I really want this matters. This is worth going out of my comfort zone for that will tend to be a more sustainable change. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's a danger as well in going out of your comfort zone if you don't do it in the right way. Um, you know, all of those people rock climbing with no ropes, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, and uh, it's great to go out of our comfort zone. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's fantastic to go out of our comfort zone when we are when we have ourselves with us, if you if you like. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I like that. I like that. I have to remember to take myself with me when, <laughs> <laughs> when I when I go somewhere. Um, uh, if you could wave a magic wand and change something about uh, your work or the world around about you at the moment, what would you like to see change? It's a bit theoretical, I know, because we don't have magic wands, but... Aha! <laughs> uh, <laughs> or maybe we do. I guess I see so much possibility in the way we can live as people, but the way also that we can run our businesses. Um, I think that the way we the way we live without sort of necessarily questioning it much or or just going on with business as usual 
this is obsolete in our world today. This is it's obsolete. So for me, I just see so much potential in uh, learning to listen more into our own innate living intelligence as people, as organizations, and learning to look at the bigger systems that we're part of and, and um, seeing how these can really help us to do something more creative that is supporting the planet, supporting society, so, you know, all of that. So I guess I am, I feel like there's a huge amount of possibility. What would I change? I guess I would just love to see more engagement with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and how does, you know, how, how would that manifest? How would people engage with it more? Uh, you know, what would, be the, what would it be in a sort of practical sense or, or, or an example of it? Just to help, just to help me in my mind get it, get it, get it clear. What does that mean, engagement? Um, well, I, I guess that's partly where coaching comes in is it's by starting to have the conversation of like, well, wow, what is it? What, 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 what am I really here for? What do I, what do I want to do? What brings me alive? Mm -hmm. Um, or with an organization, it can be to look at, okay, yes, we want to grow the bottom line, but we also know that development at any cost isn't helping our mm -hmm. society, our planet, our, you know, we've got ourselves in a great mess here. Mm -hmm. So learning to look more systemically, learning to bring in measures that include the planet, include society, you know, bring, bringing more of this in. So I think just by starting to ask some of those questions, getting into conversations more um, among business, among um, individuals, uh, this is where things like group coaching can come in, you know, where you start to have groups of people together exploring things and we see how similar a lot of our, I mean, I think this is just one more point I want to make, actually. Like, a lot of our, the way society has developed in the Western world is it's all about the individuals, which has been a positive step in a lot of ways. But a lot of things are about me. It's about what I have. It's about, oh, I'm succeeded if I'm really wealthy and have a lot of things or, or wh whatever we put on it. But it takes out, like, well, what is the impact on the life uh, around us so there's something about and we can actually even do that with our own minds we can say oh if I'm struggling in life it's my issue and I just need to change my beliefs <laughs> and there's actually a whole field of kind of coaching and self-development that is all about oh just just change your beliefs and you can do and be anything you want and I think that's really true in a certain way, and it's very important, and I work with that too. But I think it's also unhelpful if you don't look at the context and the system and the environment in which um, we are living. So becoming more aware of uh, this is, I think, a great contribution for our our, our world but also the happiness and the well-being of our own lives oh fantastic answer um everybody should hopefully understand the the impact that they have on the world through their work and through their life and be aware of uh you know what is happening around about them what is it that uh, a community could do more to support the kind of work that you do. I mean, obviously, people understand and support some elements of communities natural, but what is it that people could do to support the work of a coach or help coaching develop? Um, <clears throat> to help coaching develop? Or to help an understanding of coaching. Uh, or to help communicate to people that this option or opportunity is, is exist it, it it exists it's viable it's possible it, it's here you're there yes. for people yes yes um I mean one very short answer is simply you know give it a go <laughs> go along have a taster of, of a group coaching session or um, you know have a chat um, or 
um, speak to people who ask people about, you know, have you ever had coaching or, or um, you know, there's, there's loads. I mean, I guess when we're using this word coaching and when you're asking about coaching, there are just so many kinds. Um, but in terms of holistic, there are, there's just more and more material out there. You know, you can get online, you can look at, there's loads of reading, there's, um, there's podcasts, <laughs> um, there's <laughs> such as yours. There is, um, there, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot that you can start to look at and think about and, and be supported by. Um, also with for, for for free, you know, without without having to spend a whole lot of money on it. Do you think that there's a certain stigma attached to to, to coaching, and that uh, you know some people are going to, for no real reason, react negatively to it? Or what's what's your experience with that? If you su- suggest coaching to somebody, or you see someone suggesting it, you know, what kind of what are the kinds of responses do you get? Do you get people who are like, yeah, 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 I really want to do that, or people who they're, they're standoffish. They take a step back. You know, what, what's your experience? I think some people see coaching as, or, or there's a little bit of a maybe a shame around it, or the, almost this understanding of like, gosh, I I really um, I should know how to do the things that I do. I should know how to live my life. I should know how to make my business successful. I mean, I don't need need help with that. I think in our society we become very allergic in a way to the vulnerability of asking for support and help. But it's very interesting because in some ways, in some areas, we're like totally um, conditioned to that that's okay. You know, you have an accountant to do your accounting. You, um, you know, there's some services that we are more at ease with than when it comes to our own mental, emotional personal relational like well-being and success really but it is kind of um when you think about it it's one of the most gargantuan tasks that we have (laughs) is to really lead our lives successfully or lead our businesses successfully um so i think it helps to look at it a little bit more through that lens why wouldn't we oh absolutely absolutely I can see behind you some shelves with a lot of books on them. And that makes me wonder if you could recommend uh, a book to people who are listening. If you recommend something that uh, they could uh, pick up and uh, read a little bit of. So if you could recommend a book, what would you recommend? Um, One that comes to me now Mm -hmm. is uh, Brene Brown. I would recommend anything by Brene Brown, actually. Um, Dare to lead, dare to lead, <laughs> dare to lead. That's interesting. Dare to lead, um, braving the wilderness. Brene Brown, I think, is she captures and manages manages to articulate in such a powerful way the vulnerability that it takes to really dare to lead and to lead well. Uh-huh. And I think that also speaks to just your last question about you know why coaching or not or so on and asking for help. The edginess of asking for help, the vulnerability that we can feel sometimes to ask for help or to show our so-called weaknesses, like that we're human, that um, there is so much power in being able to bring our vulnerability more fully into our lives. Um, and, yeah, that's that's one that pops up in my mind as you ask. Wow. Your home is on fire. Everybody gets out okay, but you've got time to rush back in and pick up one thing. What is the one thing that you grab? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you. Maybe if you've got you, you've got everything you need. Do you know? At this moment, I I am. Um, I feel like I should absolutely have some little profound some kind of thought but i actually don't have anything <laughs> i cannot think what i would obviously if i'm in a fire situation i i yeah i'm i'm i might not have an idea of what to what to come in and get 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh well, look, as, as I said, maybe you maybe you don't need anything. <laughs> you, you, you know what's going to happen? It's like uh, after our conversation, it's going to click in your head. Of right? course, right. of that's course, right. and that's like coaching sessions too. You can have a coaching session, and it actually is lasting for a few days later. You're like, that's it, you know. Oh, that's, ab- that's it. Absolutely. Um, I want to be respectful of your time today. I want to say thank you very much for sharing so much wonderful information. How can people connect with you? How can people find you? How can people get in touch with you? Um, so you can, uh, my website is adelnapier.com. You can go on there. I, you can check out um, their events. So sometimes I'm holding like group coaching sessions. I'm doing that this autumn in Elgin, putting on a few group coaching sessions. Do you want to come and give have a taster to see what that's like? Um, or also just contact, you know, you can just, you can contact me and arrange a chat if you are interested to know more, whether it's for your organization or for yourself in your life. Wow. Thank you very much for your time today and i want to wish you all the success with uh, your future ventures thank you thank you g thank you so much and i love what you're doing with made in moray we're in a special part of the world here so um keep it up there's a lot of there's a lot inspiring that's happening around here so it's great to be part of that yeah i'm trying to trying to keep up with it all <laughs> it's difficult <laughs> wow Made in Mari is a product of the Academy of Language Therapy and Life Coaching. Book a free online personal or professional development consultation today. What are you waiting for?